Hi guys, welcome to the first advanced tutorial series. Unfortunately, this is going to be quite a long one and it's going to encompass the entire game. The reason is, I've decided that there's no way I can give an advanced tutorial which without reviewing and analyzing the entire game because really the advanced tutorial is going to be based on timings and buys specifically and you can't really do that without showing what happened previously so I do have to show you the entire game so it's going to be kind of like a let's play but I'm going to be introducing cues and sound effects to really drill that uh, fact into your head um, why that was done. So here we go. Hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to leave any comments for feedback. And also, uh, yeah, hopefully you, you get to learn something in this video. So first off, as the Soviets, I'm going to use Soul Squad. So this is Frag down here, 3v3 balanced map. I'm playing against Hansi, Takisakis, and Demon Hard. On my team, I've got PGA, Fuzz, and myself. So it's a balanced team game, yet again. So all these plays are extremely good, remember. So I'm coming here with the Soul Squad. I've got a bike. As the Soviets, do you have the option to go the Soul Squad and the bike, as previously mentioned? Because you can do that. So Frag down on the right, you have the trenches here. The enemy have the trenches here if they really know the map. To know where the enemy can come from. So coming from down here, I'm going to swarm down here. Instead of going to the defensive positions here, I'm going to try ambush uh, my enemy over here before he gets to the sandbags or catch him out trying to get into there. So it's a bit awkward now for him to even try to get into the sa sandbags. Sorry, not the sandbags, the trenches. And obviously you're now splitting up the troops as in my other tutorials to, to the sides around everywhere just to have some more opportunities to flank. As you can see, he's trying to storm down to the area now. My bike's providing line of cover also my guys went to prone instantly now trying to flank you with a grenade because I moved one of my guys here I have the opportunity now to throw that grenade so always split up the forces here and just throwing as many grenades as possible as you can see this is not uh, one of the laggy games this is actually an in-house um, Australian game and New Zealand game that's why I can DC grenades so you play a bit differently depending on the ping as well so, routing him out, stopping him with the uh, bike there. So, I didn't actually send anyone to the flag or anyone to that uh, trench on my end uh, because I wanted to ambush him over here and get the superiority of numbers. So, that worked here. My bike got destroyed. Quickly get the MG out of there, take the ammo out and use it out to pin him down from the trenches. So, captured his side of the trench quickly, capping his flag over here, trying to destroy him a bit there and also DCing the PPSHs as as the Soviets assault squads the PPSH is actually pretty damn good in DC it's quite accurate so moving up to capture his trench line over here uh, so a bit of map knowledge is where what happened here basically so knowing your map and knowing where the enemy is coming from ambushing him before it gets to the cover this is the way I like to play and it is if you can pull it off it is very rewarding as you can see I've got his area he has no cover and I can actually push onto his flag and make the enemy think twice. So you see, DCing the PPSHs here is very effective here. Just taking out the units from afar. I'm not too fussed about him grenading my bike because it's already got the MG taken out. So DCing here, see all the units have been taken out very quickly. All those uh, three or four units would have been dead if I didn't DC this PPSH. It's a crucial moment here at this stage because there's not much uh, being bought. So trying to flank me, repositioning, being aware that the enemy is trying to flank you there. Keep on DCing my PPSHs, moving my troops over here to face this side of the trench, to grenade them over here. So a lot of, uh, if you want to play good in your team, your I guess your low ping games, definitely D DC does go a long way here. It actually won me all those battles here with the DC of the PPSH, as you can see here. One guy here has rambling so many people with DC of PPSHs. And uh, obviously, because they do have 71 armor, this is probably one of the better guns to direct control. Um, yet again, uh, in laggier games, if I'm playing a USA player, I will never DC all this. I'll play more positional. But I have the luxury to do so, and now I'm going to be direct controlling. So, so, so bring up a shock inventory. Now I'm saving up a bit here. I'm going to try for a shock factor because I didn't lose much infantry at this stage, and I don't think I, I can actually hold with that much infantry because I've got an MG. And bringing up my shock trooper. I am quite comfortable with saving for a T-34. So I've got the T-34 here to surprise them, so I can counter everything that they have for a long time, such as any P-3s they come out with, and also any Gs they come out with, but also other 20 millimeters or flax that they come up with. So I have now a good investment here, which can last me for a long time, long time of the game. The reason I got this is because my infantry was so superior in the combat that I had the luxury to, to do this. I didn't need to get the infantry quickly. They'll be overkill basically. 
Now pushing up with my uh, T34, at this stage of the game there, there's no Panzerfaust, no Brandenburgers. So it's four minutes into the game, I know there's definitely no Brandenburgers. So I can be a bit more aggressive with my tank and move up my guys first to come up with. And obviously here my ally can't hold, I'm noticing that he said he can't hold. So I'm going to try help flank, flank the center soon. Because uh, I've got domination here. I know Takisakis has lost his, his entire squad here. And he's got some guys over at the left-hand side I'm aware too. So pushing out my tank, one infantry guy. Sending my flamer here to just uh, push up. Give Fuzz a bit of uh, uh, assurances that I'm coming to help him. And clearing out, clearing out for him. So I guess helping the ally when you can to flank uh, when your enemy is down. Don't just stay there and camp. This is a crucial moment there where Fuzz is able to get a foothold in the center and will change the game around there. I can see my northern side is not doing too well. Hansi is dominating uh, PGA there, but that's okay. If we can hold these four flags here, we should be able to win the game. So I'm going to start see if I can push up a bit more of the flamer, try to get an ambush, but I'm deciding now uh, definitely to move back because it's too open there, so I'm going to hide behind one of these uh, stone walls and come out to ambush when the time uh, time comes. So over here, just bringing up my squad here, I need sandbags basically, that's why I got a regular squad, uh, because I needed a bit of a sandbag defense up there, because there's no, um, no map terrain over that I can use. So, reason why I got the regular, they're good for the sandbags and obviously for the MG to hold. So yet again, decing the PPSHs is a deciding factor in winning the engagement there. Just one guy, but it was the assault squad leader, I think. And I moved some single infantry over here to make sure I get line of sight so Takisakis doesn't um, flank me. So I got a bit of a cover there. So pushing up my forces here to Takisakis' spawn flag and sending up some guys up here just to scout, see what's coming. I don't expect these guys to kill much or do anything much but other than scout and I saw a sniper here I was just gonna try hunt but I did find an AT rifle guy so doing no harm just running around trying to find the sniper and seeing what the enemy has if I lose these guys it's no big deal and also holding fire on one guy now to just try sneak and provide another sight for the future so uh, see so it looks like my my enemies also spawned another another squad, sorry, a squad that's going to help Takisakis. At this stage of the game now, I definitely need some sort of infantry killer, I think, because I've got the tank. He doesn't seem to be buying any tanks. The reason is because I probably have a tank on the field. Um, so I want to get an infantry killer on the field to kind of bait him to buy a tank as well. Because if I buy that uh, 61k, uh, he definitely needs to take it out with some tank. And then my tank will be of some use. So hopefully he doesn't get a, a big tank. If he doesn't get a big tank, then I'm pretty uh, in dire straits. So I'm going to be more aggressive here. Uh, push up a bit more to make sure I've dominated the infantry here. And going to charge, obviously, because I, I needed the infantry boost. And I want to spend it on the special points as well. So it's got a stug. I didn't really expect this. This is a big buy straight off the bat. But because he got the stug, I know I have infantry superiority, especially because of the charge. So I'm going to just try out shoot him there, move back a bit, turn my T-34 at the optimum angle there, so he can't penetrate me, or will struggle to penetrate me. And I'm going to try tracking him from over here. Best thing I can do so far. He's tracked me, so I can't move now. I'll just track him and allow him to stay there. So I'm going to repair there. And while that's going, I can move my 61k over here somewhere uh, for the position say so I can cover center and also um, not get shot by the stug because it's tracked but I'm going to make sure the, tra the, the stug is uh, tr tracked perpetually but some reason why this T-34 uh, just wouldn't fire at the tracks by itself I think because it's too far basically there's all these uh, bushes around too so it's not going to penetrate so he's got my main gun damn it and I know there's a sniper out there so I'm just going to try hunt for it with my 61k, just shooting at the area I think the sniper's from, and also killing some other infantry in the process, while that stug can't hit me. But I'm still very conscious of that conscious of that stug there, and I want to take it out, take out the, the guy who's repairing the track, but I think I'm too late. So unfortunate there, a bit of a mistiming for me, and I didn't get the guy repairing the track. So I said, this this 61k is definitely going to die anyway, so I'm going to go to the area where it's going to do a lot of damage right now, which is where I saw Demon Heart's full squad there. So I'm just going to do as much damage before I die, because it's going to happen, because that Stug is going to kill me any moment now, I'm guessing. Taking out his MG, which is priority. So it's doing a decent worth, I'd say 61k, just trying to make my money's worth, and there it goes. So expected there. 
my T-34 is down. So at this stage of the game, I've lost the tank battle. Because I've lost the tank battle, I've lost the infantry killer battle, and I've also, um, I'm also precarious now with my infantry um, situation. So I've got a lot of infantry though on the field still, but there's a sniper out there, and then there's a tank superiority out there, and Takisakis is probably going to go a flak or 20mm. So I have to think about uh, how am I going to deal with this at this stage. So right now I'm thinking of getting a BS3. The reason why I'm thinking of getting a BS3 is because I really need some sort of anti-vehicle, um, anti anti-tank situation. And if I get another light tank or, or another small gun, it will probably get killed by the Stug. And also, um, yeah, basically it'll just, it'll just be quite useless in my opinion at this stage. So I'm going to wait for the BS3. It's only two minutes. I'm just seeing what uh, he's going to buy. If he buys a 20mm, I'd probably rush out a, a light tank. But I don't think he'll get a 20mm. So we'll see what happens first. I'm waiting for that buy on Takis at this stage. If we did get a 20mm Lux, I'll definitely go in a light 80 gun quickly. At this stage, just trying to get as much damage as my units that I have on the field. So proning straight away and shooting down Demon Hard's troops there in the center. And this flag is definitely lost. A bit just slowing him down there, I guess. Waiting for that BS3 to come out. So nothing on the field Takis has is really gonna rip me apart. Right now, Takisak is if he bought a Luke, a Lux, that would definitely be a really game-changing moment for me, and I'll need to really uh, think about um, how to kill it. And even a guard's rifle could be an option there if he does go some sort of 20mm light vehicle. So fighting on that BS3 very, very um, carefully. And see on the right hand side, I've got troops there, still scouting there. Just to provide line of sight, nothing, nothing more. It's not going to stop an attack. It's going to just show me attack. So here I've made a strategic choice. They're going a charge, because right now a charge will be useless without any tank support or any infantry killer support. So I have to play a defensive game for Takisakis till the BS3 comes. So it's switching over from my offensive to defensive now. The reason why I didn't go a charge, obviously, is they're going to get massacred because of the units he has in the field. The snipers can do damage from afar and and wear out Takis Sakis's troop bit by bit. And here's a crucial play here where I grenaded some infantry, throwing some Molotovs at the right time, getting the sniper out to right click and kill the target and my most in there took him out. So that's the entire paratroop squad killed by two guys, basically. Um, so you, you can see how important DC is um, if you don't have lag. And people who say that um, Australians cannot play uh, are, are really good at lag playing, is that's totally wrong. Um, we can play in, in DC2. We get affected by lag too, guys, and we can play much better in, um, in non-laggy games too. Uh, so basically here, uh, Takisakis is coming down here. Just trying to get up my grenades off, trying to make efficient use of my troops. Sniper's constantly wearing them out slowly. Reposition my sniper back here just to survive. I know I'm going to get overwhelmed, waiting for my next squad to come up. Um, just wearing down Takis's assault here. Takis Sakis' biggest mistake right now is not going a 20mm uh, looks or something like that. Because um, I can take exploit that by going to sniper. So really, I didn't really have a superiority in tank there, but I was able to hold out because... Um, because of my defensive switch. And now BS3 is out. Don't recommend you deploying the BS3 just like that. You have to turn away, turn around with your tank or your light vehicle, armor T20, and then prone down because uh, it takes so long for these guys to turn. This is a quick way to turn, basically. So BS3 now, gonna hold fire on it because it's so important to get the first shot on the Stug or whatever comes. The Stug. Uh, flak, so as I say, he did get a flak, this came a bit late. Uh, definitely want to take it out with uh, HE shell. I didn't want to change it automatically, so I'm going to change it for it. Uh, focus fire on that with the HE to take it out. And you see how powerful the sniper is doing at this stage, these two snipers. Definitely a, a really good killer on the field. Usually I like to go charge, uh, because I, I can be aggressive with it. With snipers you can't really be aggressive. Snipers are attritional basically. They will wear out the enemy um, very, very slowly and it will prevent the enemy from basically picking out. 
He's coming here with a flank now. I know he's prone with his troops. Uh, BS3 is out, so it's going to protect me from the Stug. I can see the Stug reappearing on the map, so I'm going to try to see if I can still get a shot on it. You see that from the red dot there. Getting my T-34 in the right angle to move it back a bit to try to bait the Stug too. The Stug, I don't know if you've seen my BS3 yet, but I'm guessing maybe he hasn't, so I'm going to uh, wait for my... T-34 to back up. So just holding, getting hold of the trench again, his defensive line. And now it's time for another push here. I don't really have much to push with except the T-34, so I'm going to come up with the T-34. Uh, kind of bait the stug out too. And push him out the flag. So charging up infantry squads, uh, I know he's weak there. And a bit of a reward for a flag, so always uh, good to attack at the right time. The Stug's in range, I'm just checking. 150, I can penetrate it at max. It's going to change to a bloody AP shell. Take a shot. Got the tank crew, so crew injured. See how, see how crazy the sniper is, just picking off the troops bit by bit. And my BS3 took out my sniper there. That was blocking. Uh, that was annoying. <laughs> Still got one sniper left though. So at, at this stage of the game, um, Takisakis uh, probably needs to, he needs to really take out my BS3 to send any sort of 20 millimeter. I probably, if I was him, I'd probably get another flak 20 millimeter because um, the BS3 will struggle to take that out when it's back here, just for a defense. Because it's so close to spawn, it can waltz up a, a flak 37, 20 millimeter. And my, I don't have anything much to take it out. Moving on BS3, just getting in range a bit more. Don't think you can see it. It doesn't have any infantry near my, near my area here. I'm going to Marines as well just to get a bit superiority of fire. So 25 to 28, they're in the lead still and looks like they're really dominating on the other flags as well. Pushing up with my marines and my uh, tractor there. Just trying to push out the enemy, get the MG down. Stug takes my guy down, seeing if now my BS3 is in range. Also got a half track here just to clear the enemy from around here, the MG, I know it doesn't have anything. And also to get his Stug to turn, Stug to turn. Because this is very crucial here. There's lots of troops here that can get flanked. And now his stug may turn, which it does, and I do take it out. So a bit of baiting there, as well knowing that he hasn't got any defense for a half-track there. And the half-track is a very efficient killer of troops. So he had to take it out quickly. So I think the biggest mistake Takisakis didn't make, make here is not having a flak 37 uh, emplacement 20mm to take out my infantry. To stop an assault of some sort. Because I didn't really have a tank that was... Uh, available to take it out but now I probably do because it's repaired the main guns repaired I think by now but he could have taken that out so he would have forced me my t-34 to come up and then um, that stug would have taken taken my t-34 out when it was trying to take out my um, when I was trying to take out his flak but nevertheless what happened was he didn't and now I've got the full domination of tank and BS3 so I'm seeing he's quite low on MP now Gonna push up uh, a bit more. T60 now. I'm knowing that uh, I've got my tank domination and my anti tank domination. And now I'm just gonna make the T60 uh, come out to destroy everything on the field. Just get the infantry killer. AT guns and T34. So it's got a G there. 50 50 play on my T36, but I got a BS3 as well to help protect. And just telling him, I definitely am learning as well. Doing the tutorials, uh, organizing my knowledge of the game actually helps me understand the game a bit more. As you can see here, also here, fire shooting. Always try it. I saw that tree there for opportunity. I just quickly uh, aimed at it and shot. You never know. It happens often, too often for me, where I get killed the tank fire shooting. So the tank has died from a fire shot. And I know at this stage he just bought a G. He's going to have nothing to counter my units easily. So I'm gonna quickly run into his spawn now and just try to uh, destroy everything I can there. And I know he has a nibble too, so I'm gonna try to ambush that nibble. Charging right in there at the right timing. 
Uh, you're going to predict these things, especially because he just bought a Jeep. Killed it. Now he's got nothing left to protect his nibble. And now you, you can just quickly storm in there and his ally won't get a chance to really um, respond quick enough. So I've got to be unlucky that my teeth evolve can destroy it. But then you can see I'll get lucky again. So always charge up. You never know with your Marine. So his ally has responded. Hansy's responded. I'm not sure who that is actually. No, that was Hansy, I think. Uh, and now I'm going to just take out his uh, nibble. So <laughs> lucky these guys actually automatically fired at these, this guy, not this guy. So <laughs> that was a bit of bad luck there and luck for me too. Uh, either way, I want the lesson of the story is to know when to charge at the right time. And it doesn't matter if you lose a few units. It's always worth uh, getting that big kill there. So Takisakis has pretty much wiped out the game. And now at this stage, I've got to repair my BS3 quickly so I can take out any other tank and have the domination. If this BS3 stays alive, I can essentially win the game with tanks for the entire game. But this is a big danger here. Hans is flanking me here, always sapping his teammates, in which he's doing very, very fine. And takes it out luckily. So I got a bit lucky there. That was a very dangerous position to be in there with that looks could have just run me over. T-34, 57, brought it out quickly just to counter that looks, just in case. But now, since it's counter, I'm going to help my teammate out take out that P-4. I know Takisekis has nothing to counter out with me, counter with me with. And i got the BS-3 there that's kind of providing a fear thing for Takis. So Takis can't really send a tank down my way because that BS-3 is over there. So the T-34, 57 is the one to do gonna take out that P4 then take out that flak for my ally and after that I can move on Takis's flag but right now P4s can get penetrated max range just taking a damn long time just aiming generally in the center area because it, it doesn't matter where it hits really it's gonna penetrate the guns really powerful it should damn penetrate <laughs> Takizaki is bringing up a lot of infantry. I'm seeing a pretty sparse infantry now. Definitely need to go something to kill infantry. So going T60. And the T60 reason why I went T60 is because it can bait um, a tank from Takis. Because if Takizaki doesn't kill that T60, he's dead. Uh, he won't be able to move and he's pretty much gone. So that's the reason why. I've got the tank killers on the field. And because I have the tank killers on the field, I can get the infantry killers. And you'll see here a shocking cup of bullshit will happen soon. Well, I'll do take out this H as well. So, helping your teammates again, getting good flanks on the enemy, and uh, yep, T60 decides to get stuck on my BS3, as you can see here, oh, it's glitch. So now I can't move my T60, and my BS3 is stuck, uh, I'm trying to move it, very frustrating, uh, maybe I can uh, DC it, I'm going to go in DC, try drive, nope, won't work, um, pathfinding in AS2, this is one nice thing BS3 is getting slowly pushed I'm gonna see maybe I can tow it um, get my because my gas 67 should be able to tow it I know I can tow vehicles so filling up the gaps of infantry I know I'm sparse on it I definitely need more infantry around the map around here Takisekis could have exploited quite easily by running in but I know I have a T60 here but not for long because of this uh, glitch here. So you see, I hover my mouse over it. It doesn't want to tow as well. It's some sort of glitch mode. So I bought a, a, an, another vehicle there, just in case this gas was glitched and couldn't have picked it up. It was so important that the BS3 stayed alive. It was a crucial unit in my game. ZS5, no, didn't want to pick it up. Sometimes it have the, has the join cursor there, as you can see, flashed up, but no. Frustrating here. And I think I'm going to lose everything. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's pretty much I'm pretty much uh, game there I think um, I'm not gonna give up though the reason why is because I have the T57 which still gives me tank dominance I'm able to bring up the tanks kill everything on the field T60 dies to a P4N I'm still comfortable because my T3457 can kill it decent buy there from Takisakis going the P4N because in AS2, they do have long range, 150 range. 
sorry, I mean they don't they outrange the AT guns now or have the same range. So lost everything, um, and pretty much it will really set me back now. And my allies are really struggling versus the higher skilled players on versus us. So could have gone either way. I was quite comfortable holding that point with the T60 and BS3, and then also the T3457. And then I could have slowly, once I took over Takis, I would have pushed onto the center and helped my allies and finished, uh, hopefully finished the game. But it that was not meant to be. So I'm going to try T57, get lucky, try take out that end quickly. So it, because uh, he has no counter for me right now. Before I do so, I need to wait for my infantry for some support. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, basically, it's similar like to a Let's Play, I guess. I'm not sure if it's any different. I'm just trying to make it a bit different by giving more tips and also by um, providing some text and more clearer uh, learning moments. Because uh, I find uh, some players, I guess the veteran players are the very good players. The difference between, I guess, the very best and the very good players is that sometimes they don't buy the right things, sometimes they don't do the right timing. But mostly, I think, uh, it's also micro. Some people can't micro as fast as others. And uh, lastly, I think the, the other factor is people don't take opportunities. Like, I find a lot of uh, uh, very good players just don't... Um, don't attack at the specific right moment and take make use of the most opportunities. So coming here, um, trying to get push up. My infantry has line of sight, so I'm going to try push up now and take out his end and cap that flag back. My infantry is coming from spawn as well. I need more infantry definitely. I know it's coming. So while it's coming, I'm just going to try take out that end. Still didn't notice that looks was in the way. Next squad coming here. MG's being a bit pesky, gotta try to take that out. It's N take, took, t takes out a lot of my units there. So pushing up here. I had a lot of guys come here through that way there, but I uh, didn't really expect Takis to charge on the left there. So uh, a bit of desperation here and looks like I screwed up there. And really uh, that's that goes the game I don't have anything to take anything out now and my MP situation is low and my allies were banking on me from to flank and uh, win the game for them so it's pretty much uh, good game I don't have anything to counter that 2-2-2 two, two, two. so it's a surrender moment now and that's basically it so uh, I guess the the key things in this game is to attack when the enemy's down no one to attack uh, assault squads direct controlling Soviet PPSHs can be lethal. Also changing an attack to a defense um, with the veteran, the motion sniper buys to the charge buys. Charge a great offensive unit. Uh, snipers are a great defensive unit. And then uh, BS3. So good game, guys. Hope you enjoy.